I messed up by telling my parents about my inheritance. Plus updates. Original post. My 36 female sister died six months ago from a heart condition. She practically raised me, so it's been difficult to deal with. I'm in my final year of university and have failed every single class this semester. She'd be disappointed, but it is what it is. My sister never married and never had children. I lived with her near campus. She ran her successful side business and I got to help her occasionally as a paid intern. She worked a lot, but not to support us. She just wanted to retire by the time she was 40. She would have been done in four years, and her heart had to fail her first. When she died, her attorney read her will to me. She had left everything to me. She had a generous amount of money put away for her retirement and side accounts for various activities for her retirement. I did not know that she had made several real estate investments, so she could continue living a comfy lifestyle once she retired. She left her 2006 Subaru to me and willed our current house to me as well. She left nothing to my parents, but as they didn't know she had assets, they willingly paid for the funeral and any other associated costs. My sister was no contact with our parents, and I'm very low contact, and we are their only two children. At the funeral, my parents asked me how I was going to continue going to college without her money, as they thought she paid for them when I have student debt. I told them I'd continue to take out loans. They asked about my living arrangements and I shrugged. At the time, I didn't know all the details anyway. Well, two weeks ago, I found out my parents tried to sell my sister's house whilst I still live there. They brought a realtor and toured our home and everything. It was all on the cameras set up in the home. When I called them and informed them I'd be calling the police, they explained the situation. I told them it's my home and it was willed to me. They couldn't sell it. They were very confused, so I told them to meet at my attorney's and set a time. Cue today, my attorney explained the will to my parents. My mother went white as a sheet, and my father was grumbling about suing me for his rightful money, plus the cost of the funeral. My mother began ugly sobbing, telling the attorney he was wrong. Her daughter would not leave the house to someone like me. The attorney cut the meeting short, and now we're preparing for the inevitable lawsuit coming my way. I just want to sleep and avoid all of this. Added to add, mom is a stay-at-home mom, but the kind who spends her life at a country club, not the involved kind. Dad is a businessman and is typically on business trips for weeks at a time. They live, as they call it, lower upper class. Now for the top advice before reading the updates. Imagine losing your child and being mad about not getting money from it. Sounds like the type of parents to be left off the wheel to me. That and the fact that Opie's sister raised her. Opie, let them sue. They won't win. You now have the time and money to entertain them. They will just lose more money and don't give them the money for the funeral until the lawsuit is over. You don't want them to think you feel guilty. When my mother-in-law died from cancer, her parents were mad that she left everything to her kids and nothing to them. I don't have any children. My parents said just leave it to your sister. We don't need it. That's because your parents aren't monsters. Exactly. These parents are freaking monsters failing to hide in human skin. This is like the situation you see in shows, where the parents racked up so much debt that they sold their own kids into slavery to pay it off. Except it's real life. I hate people that only think about money when a loved one dies. That's all my wife's aunts and uncles cared about when her grandfather died. Apparently, they wanted this big house enough to start suing each other. I'm glad my wife's parents stayed out of the whole thing. I hope you have now changed the lock. I haven't yet, but you make a good point. I'll get on that today. Question, how did your parents have a key to her house when she has no contact with them? I gave them a key after she passed. Mistake on my part. Now for the first update. I didn't expect this to blow up, to be honest. Thank you everyone for the support. I've gotten to read almost all the comments and I feel a lot less anxious now. I did talk to my professors and four out of six of them gave me extensions. But the other two are being jerks about it. It's fine though. I did sign up for my school's grief group. I just got done changing all my locks too. Thanks to everyone who helped me with home stuff too. I'll be sure to watch the home insurance bill or get a financial advisor or something. My sister's degrees and mine are in the same field so I'll be continuing her business too. And I'll need a real estate attorney to redo the leases on her other rentals I guess. I don't know. It's overwhelming. Since this keeps coming up, I stupidly gave them a key a few months after she passed. I didn't know they'd even be trying this until after the fact. The will doesn't say anything about them, but I'm leaving it up to the attorney to figure everything out. I will be paying them regardless for the cost of funeral, celebration of life, etc. 
Father sent me a text apologizing. Said he wanted to sell the house because of the market right now, but won't push me. We'll give more details at some point. Gonna see how this plays out first, and I'll give an official update at some point. Second update. My father stated he will not challenge the will, but warned us mother is still going to try. He said to my attorney, not me, that despite his efforts to convince her, she's saying mental health issues will prevent OP from doing what needs to be done. My sister's best friend Amy was looped in since mother would be challenging the will, which she is a part of. She's been amazing, and I'm very happy she's around. She used to live with my sister and I, but left when she died, not because I wanted her to. She said it was hard being in our home, but she decided to come back after all of this. I told my attorney since my sister had money set aside for a funeral anyway, I should offer to at minimum pay them back. They, Amy and attorney, both agreed it'd be a good idea so my parents won't have a leg to stand on in court. Attorney has another meeting scheduled with my father on Friday slash Monday, depending on his availability. Things are going fast, and I didn't expect them to go this fast. It's like my head is spinning. As for school, had a meeting with the dean and my academic advisor. Finals are next week, so they thankfully moved it up. I explained the situation to them and they were apologetic and let me know they'd talk to my teachers. The dean got back to me today and said the teachers were unwilling to compromise and ultimately it was up to them. He suggested I get the withdrawal for the classes so I'll drop those classes. I'm taking a semester break too, as a lot of you suggested. Oh, and for the Reddit user who said to offer free housing for the first year as a scholarship, Amy thought it would be a great way to honor my sister. Not sure the process for that, but Amy said she'd help me figure it out once I'm out of school. I'm happy Amy's back at home. Doesn't feel quite as empty as it did before. I'll update again if there's any other developments. But for now, I'm gonna log out and let my attorney handle this. Thank you everyone for the advice. Grief screws with people, eh? Sounds like your dad has calmed down, but your mom has got her eyes on a payload. With time, hopefully it all settles without costly court drama. Good luck. Someone recommended reading stuff in r slash just no mother-in-law, and a lot of the stories have behavior that my mother exhibits, so it wouldn't shock me if she was one of those. I'm still being wary of dad because he is a businessman and this could be another trick, but for now, it is what it is. He might have only gone along with it in the beginning to keep peace with your mom. Or he may be playing the good cop. It's odd that he still tried to convince her to sell the house because of the market. Why would that matter to him if he's not going after any of her money? The sister said she wanted the house to be used for student housing. Why would he advocate going against her wishes? Seems fishy to me. Might be a good idea to find a therapist slash counselor to help you through all this. Dealing with the loss of a close family member is hard enough, but adding the stress of dealing with the extra legal drama isn't making it easier. Check with your lawyer. But if your mom tries to pull the mental health card to gain control, you'd potentially have them as a witness to counter your mom's mental health shenanigans. Good luck and I'm sorry for your loss. Now for the third and final update. I wanted to keep it mostly vague, but update you all. We settled prior to court for an undisclosed amount. She agreed to drop some things like slander, if I agreed to drop some things like emotional distress. Side note, those are just examples and most definitely not the things we discussed. We both came to the agreement that I could post whatever the heck I want. Dad pushed the whole freedom of speech stuff. I said I wouldn't let her take it down from me, but honestly, I was just too exhausted from it. I can't go into much detail, but I may make a new account and start posting all the crap my mother has put me through. Since everyone, meaning my parents, knows about this one now. Amy still being an awesome mama bear, and I was looking into adult adoption or at minimum changing my last names to hers. I want no ties to my parents. Anyway, thanks for the support and love. And yes, my father has been refunded for anything funeral-related. Death and money brings out the worst in people. Relatives lining up to get their hands on the assets of the deceased. I have seen this happen a number of times, and it is freaking depressing. To everyone out there, spend the money and get a good quality will written up by a lawyer who knows their stuff. Absolutely this. Husband's father died last year, and it has been an absolute nightmare to deal with his wife. She's kind of been a gold digger for years, and his death has not stopped her. Thanks rightfully in my husband's name, she's attempted to take her outright stolen. Yeah, the ironclad will. It's worth the money. Also, go through your home about every six months to a year and document everything expensive you own. Update the list when you make big purchases. 
Someday it might really help out your children. This was not done with my husband's father, unfortunately. So some of the stuff his stepmom has stolen are gone forever since there was no good way to prove they existed. Jesus, this is my sister right now. She's trying to keep me out of everything. Retirement fund? Sorry, but I'm listed as a beneficiary. Life insurance? Not only am I a beneficiary, I'm primary while she's secondary. The house? Yeah, so that's in a trust with a total of five people in it. I'm the tiebreaker. Mom's jewelry? Mom gave me mine months ago. Loved her face when I purposely wore a specific necklace that was actually worth something to Christmas dinner. My house? Heifer, that's been mine for years. No, we won't be selling it so that we can split the proceeds, because your butt has six figures in student loan debt, a shopping addiction, and an inability to live within means. It's my freaking house. I live here. Mom's bank accounts? She messed up there and used mom's debit in front of our dad, and he financially cut her off. Her excuse? I'm power of attorney. Yeah, so that ended when mom died. She's an attorney, by the way. I'm watching this crap show like, well, this is gross. I'm keeping receipts literally and biding my time. Probate has a six-month backlog in our area, and I'm not willing to tip my head until there's no chance for her to cover her butt. I have my own attorney. Hope that the hot tub and Disney vacation were worth it. Now that she gave her loser mother some money, there's no way that mother would stop. She'll be a parasite looking for Opie to torment and get money from still. Since they settled before court, there's probably a paper trail and conditions written down by a lawyer, just in case she tries to go and sue later. She must have a terrible lawyer, because I see nothing that would make a judge invalidate any part of this will. You can leave your possessions to whoever you damn well, please. Last story. Update. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother why I don't talk with our father? Original post. I, 32 male, have not a good relationship with my dad. The reason being the pressure he put me on. If I had anything less than a 90 over 100, he would be disappointed with me and tell me I was a failure and I would never be anyone in life. I still remember he and my mom, 59 female, fighting. She always defended me saying I was doing my best, but he would always scream that my best wasn't enough. When I was 12, I got 83 out of 100 in a math test and I freaked out. I remember coming home crying. Thankfully, my dad was at work, and I begged my mom to not tell my dad. I guess seeing a 12-year-old boy freaking out over a grade that even teacher thought was grade was enough, mom divorced my dad. I believe that was the moment he understood he screwed up and tried to apologize. My mom always wanted me to have a good relationship with my dad, and I would stay with him one weekend a month. At 16, he had my brother with my stepmom, and I had to watch the same man call me a failure, be the best dad to my brother. Then at 18, I cut my dad and his family off, with the exception of my grandparents and my uncle. One year ago, my grandfather passed away and at his funeral I saw my dad and his family. My dad briefly looked at me and then turned his head down in shame. My uncle came up to me. He said he understood if I did not want to talk to my dad but asked if I would talk with my brother. I said yes and I met with him outside. We had a great conversation and in the last year he has met my wife and children and we have a good relationship. A few days ago, my brother asked why I don't talk to our dad. I told him what I wrote here and more. In the end, I told him our dad wasn't good to me but that did not mean he should stop talking to him as well. Yesterday, my uncle called me and said my brother and my father fought because of what I shared with my brother. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Childhood trauma is very hard to move past because it happens in our formative years. I know this from personal experience. You weren't trying to cause problems, just explain why you do what you do. I had the same kind of talk with my brothers about 20 years ago, not the a-hole. That's the worst bit, isn't it? That your real memories and experiences are seen as dredging up the past and causing drama. As if survivors can simply make everyone else comfortable if we'd stop talking about how much pain we're still in years later. Not the a-hole, clearly. That method of thinking makes me shake with fury. It's like people saying that the life of the person who did harm shouldn't be ruined over a mistake. It takes zero account of how the victim will forever carry that trauma. That even after decades of therapy, it can still peek out and mess things up. My favorite line was, keeping the peace. Whose peace? Sure as heck wasn't mine. After all the life experience you have now, you might realize that he was far from perfect. And that when his wife divorced him for treating you badly, he finally took stock of who he was. 
and because he lost Hugh and his wife due to immature and reasonable behavior, he changed his ways. The fact that he was still ashamed years later at your grandfather's funeral shows that he matured and has a very active conscience. What do you want from him? Do you think that your intransigence is similar to his when he was hard on you? Because of you, he became a good father to his other son. You might think about forgiveness and forging a relationship with him. I just can't. I was in therapy for 10 years, and every time I was with him, I was nervous he would scream at me. I am way better now mentally now that I've cut him off. I am happy he was able to be a good dad to my brother. I just can't be with him. Now for the update. So, a few people have advised me to talk with my father and reconnect with him. I won't do that. It's hard to explain. Although I don't hate him, the trauma is too much for me to handle. I talked with my brother. He told me he fought with our dad because he believed what our father did to me was unforgivable, and he now blames our father for never having a brother. I told him that I will always going to be his brother no matter what, and that our father has learned from his mistakes. My brother asked then why didn't forgive him, and I told him what I wrote here. They are talking again, so overall this went better than what I expected. Thank you for the update. Generous of you to acknowledge your father has learned. I can only imagine how bad a trauma must still be. Yes, great update. I get not wanting to reconnect with your father and support your decision to separate yourself. You are being very generous by encouraging your brother to maintain and enjoy his relationship with dad. I can't imagine how hard it must be for you to sit on the sidelines and watch him be the father he should have been to you.